الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء أشرف المرسلين When we talk about Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salatu wassalam Jesus the son of Mary you will notice that we as Muslims we always say peace and blessings be upon him that is a love that is a respect that we have for all of the prophets we send peace and blessings upon them we love them we respect them we believe in them equally what does it mean equally meaning that our belief in all of the prophets is complete we don't deny any one of the prophets if we were to deny that Jesus the son of Mary was a prophet peace and blessings be upon him we could not be muslims if we were to deny Ibrahim Musa Isa Muhammad alayhum salam peace and blessings be upon all of them if we were to deny any of one of these prophets it would be as if we've denied all of them this is our aqeedah this is our belief as muslims that we believe jesus was born to a virgin mary and that is why it is uh, sometimes surprising to me that people will uh, say the christian judo christian faith and the judo christian beliefs and the judo christian values and they will exclude islam even though in reality muslims and christians have more in common than for example christians and jews muslims believe jesus was born to a virgin mary jews do not from what i've spoken to rabbis across the board they do not believe that muslims believe jesus brought a message from god from allah jews do not muslims do not believe that jesus was a liar nor do we believe that he was a false prophet as many jews have clearly stated so in this we have a lot more in common now when we talk about jesus peace and blessings be upon him and as i have stated we as muslims love jesus we respect jesus we believe in him as a prophet but we believe in him as a prophet we do not worship jesus we do not pray through jesus we do not consider him god nor do we consider him the son of god many of the verses that we find in the quran explicitly make that clear like what our brother earlier recited regarding maryam and jesus uh, peace and blessing be upon both of them and how he he was given as a sign to show the world that he's a prophet born without a father miraculously spoke as a child miraculous food was given to maryam alayhi salam she was told not to speak she didn't have to respond he jesus peace and blessings be upon him spoke and this is a miracle so that the people would know that this is a messenger bringing a message just like the earlier messengers they had their own miracles if we look at moses peace and blessings be upon him and how he split the sea if you look at abraham peace and blessings be upon him how he wasn't burnt in the fire if we look at noah may his blessings be upon him and how the flood did not destroy even if you were going to get uh, scientific and mathematical a little boat in such a huge flood couldn't survive but it was the will of allah like this the prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him had many miracles of his own including miracles at the time of his birth where the light shone and this is something you can look up in the uh, durus in the lessons that we had on the seerah on the life of the prophet peace and blessings be upon him miracles throughout his life when he was a child when his chest was opened and cleansed when he grew uh yani other miracles when he would walk and the and the sh- shade and the clouds would follow him when he would go and trees would prostrate to him and after that when he was a prophet when he split the moon by the will of allah all of these are miracles that doesn't mean we should worship muhammad peace and blessings be upon him rather we should know he's a true prophet The same is true for Jesus. Jesus was a Muslim. And when I say that, sometimes Christians and Jews and others they become surprised. They what do you mean he was a Muslim? He was 600 years before the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon both of them. Like we realize that. Do you think we don't have a history book? <laughs> But the issue is most people don't realize what is a Muslim. Muslim is not a new term. For example, if I was to ask you, and this is going to be interactive, I don't want you guys going to sleep on me. I'm already tired enough as it is. Huh? If I was to ask you the word Christianity, where does it come from? Christ. 
So before the word Christ, was there a name Christianity? No. Before Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, there was no such thing as Christianity. Let's use another one, Judaism. Judah. So before Judah, is there Judaism? No, technically. Right. Buddha. I tricked you there, see? I gave you the name first, Buddhism. Named after Buddha. Before the Buddha, was there any such theology as Buddhism? No. Shintoism, whether you consider it a philosophy or whatever, Shinto, right? If you look at Confucianism, right? Confucius, and after him the name Confucius, so on. What is Muslims named after? Islam. Aslama. The word Muslim did not begin with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. That's why we're not called Muhammadins even if some Orientalists like that term. But we don't have that term in the Qur'an, in Hadith. We don't see Muhammadins. We find Muslim. In the Qur'an, it talks about Ibrahim salam and the name Muslim. Why? Because this is not something that began with the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. A Muslim is the one that submits his will to his creator. And the message of the creator as we know, all of the Anbiya, all of the messengers, they brought the same message. And that is why, for example, the organization for Da'wah in San Diego, it's called One Message Foundation. One message. What does that mean? It's the same message. What is the message that every prophet brought? It was that, believe in your Lord. Don't worship idols. Don't worship anything but the one true creator and follow the prophet of your time. So if you were to follow Moses in the time of Moses, you were a Muslim. If you were to follow Abraham in the time of Abraham, you were a Muslim. If you were to follow Jesus in the time of Jesus, you were a Muslim. If you were to follow Muhammad in the time of Muhammad, you are a Muslim. Peace and blessings be upon all of the Anbiya. So that is a Muslim. If I was there in the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, I would follow him. And that's what a Muslim would be because Jesus, he submitted his will to the Creator. He did what the Creator said. So he's a Muslim and those around him that followed that message were Muslims. And that is the Muslim belief. And that's why some people get confused by the statement because they, they're ignorant of what the term Muslim means. As Muslims, we don't believe God switched up the game. It doesn't mean that, okay, for the time of the people of Israel, you had to do good deeds, you had to believe in God, not worship idols. And then a time came that God sent his son and you killed him and now all of that good deeds is done. Now you don't have to do any of that. You just have to believe in Jesus and you go to heaven. Like, it switched up the game. We don't believe that. We believe all the Ambiya brought that message. Look, you need to be a good person. You need to be accountable for your deeds. None of our deeds are good enough to go to heaven. We're not saying that. It's the mercy of Allah. But we have to strive and struggle and try. It doesn't mean that you're like, Khalas, I'm going to be a rapist, murdering, cheating, stealing, whatever. But I just believe, so I'm going to heaven. No. Even as a Muslim, we believe Allah will take us accountable for our, for our deeds. And if we repent, if we fix ourselves, if we do good deeds, so on, with the mercy of Allah, we can enter Jannah. But... It is hypocritical to say that salvation is free. Salvation is a gift. Jesus already died for your sins. You just have to accept. And then we would say, well, you had Hitler just across the channel here. And he believed in Jesus. He quoted the Bible. He had an iron cross, right? That was a symbol of their military. Is he going to heaven? Like, no, no, no. He, he killed so many people. Yeah, but you said Jesus died for his sins. So then he's going to heaven. No, no, no. Hypocritical. For us, we like to be, we say what we mean and we believe and we live by it. Even as a Muslim, if you kill innocent people, you will be held accountable in front of Allah. You will be held accountable for your deeds. So as a Muslim, we are told that don't take an innocent life, otherwise you'll be held accountable as if you killed the entire mankind. And this is a serious Warning for us as Muslims. As Muslims who are told you don't not to cheat and steal and do all these things because Allah will hold us accountable. Even if you're Muslim. So this is 
The message of Islam. This is the message of Jesus. This is the message of Moses. This is the message of Abraham. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. Now, somebody might say that in the New Testament, for example, you have verses that elude to Jesus being divine. I am and before Abraham I was and all kinds of things like that and the word and before was the word and uh, any. The first thing we would say is from the divine scriptures. From the divine scriptures. We have the Quran, for example, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Miraculously. How? If you look at the Quran, till today, from a linguistic perspective, we don't find a book like it. Till today, when you study Arabic grammar, Nahu and Sarf and Balagha, you will, you will go back to the Quran as a decisive evidence. I used to take uh, uh, Arabic 101 kind of a class, a beginning Arabic class in San Diego in a college. And the teacher was an Arab Christian lady. And there would sometimes be debates between the Arabic speaking students. No, no, it's like this and it's like this. And I still remember she would write a verse from the Quran and see, see, it's like that in the Quran, debate over. That's amazing. 14 and a half centuries later, we're still going back to a book and saying this is the decisive, even an Arab Christian is saying, this is the decisive evidence for the Arabic language. But how could you think a man who can't even read or write wrote it? I couldn't write it. Couldn't even read something else and then try to talk about it. The Quran brings miracles that are undeniable. The Quran talks about the heavenly bodies being in, in orbits and, and a, a path, even the sun. Until very recently, scientists were debating whether the sun has an orbit. And the majority opinion was it doesn't. Now, today, if you Google this, you will find that the majority of the scientists the world are saying, yes, it does have an orbit. And there is no physical way the Prophet Muhammad, peace be, in, peace be upon him, could have known that. About how sweet water and salt water touch but don't meet. The Prophet never went to a place where there was salt water. Other miracles about the, the, the waves under the ocean, the mountains and how there's, they're like pegs that go in the ground. Many things that he could not have known. The Quran made prophecies about the outcomes between the battles of between Persians and Romans that came true. That he, peace be upon him, could not have known. The Quran talked about the stories of the past that the Arab didn't know about. For example, when, they, when the Jews asked the question, how come Moses was in Egypt when he is from the people of Palestine, the people of the Levant, these areas? The Prophet didn't know this. The Arabs didn't know this. But here Allah revealed the Quran in Surah Yusuf and responded that how did Moses and the people of Israel get there? It's because in the time of Yaqub, when uh, the son Yusuf was taken there, when he was betrayed by his brothers and so on. So these things are continuous miracles that show that this is the words of Allah. So when this is revealed, and it is preserved, how is it preserved? Our brother recited some verses earlier. He's sitting here. These brothers, you will see, have memorized the Quran. Word by word, letter by letter. Here in the United Kingdom, we just had Ramadan. And in almost every masjid across your country, as in America, we recited the entire Quran in the taraweeh, in the prayers that we pray from memory. And if the imam made a slight mistake in a verse, 10 people behind him will correct him. And some of the massages, like 20, 30, you know, it's like, come on, take it easy, you know. Why? Because we've memorized the Quran. From the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, till our time, we have asanid, chains. Who memorized from who? Who memorized from who? Word by word, letter by letter, even the pronunciation. Today, if I was to ask you, what is the correct pronunciation of the word tomato? No, no, I said tomato. You would say tomato. I would say tomato. You would say potato. I would say potato. Right? Now, we can go back and forth. You can say we're from England, England English is from England, and I could tell you, I don't know the 
I don't think you guys speak the original, you know, uh, Queen's English. And some South African will come in and be like, our English is the best. And like, what? Where did you guys come from? Right? The bell. Right? But here, how would we know? In fact, if I gave this lecture in Shakespearean English, most of you would be lost. And I couldn't because I have no idea, right? If I started speaking, thou knowest not what thy doeth, those little young guys would be like, what is he talking about, right? But Arabic has been preserved because of the Quran. We, I'm not Arab. I learned Fusha, classic Arabic, the Quranic Arabic, because of the Quran. And many of my teachers were not Arabs. They were not Arab, but they were so eloquent in the classic Arabic. So the Quran has been preserved, memorized, in letter by letter, word by word, even the pronunciation in the classic Arabic. Today, if we have a disagreement on how to even pronounce a word, we have Qur'at. We have the different styles of recitation that preserve even the sounds and how they should be made. And teacher by teacher, student by student, that has been preserved all the way to the Prophet So when you have that perfectly preserved, miraculous words of Allah, and then you have, for example, accounts in the New Testament. The New Testament, as the Holy Bible would call it, is made up of a certain number of books, and from them are Gospels. But who authored these Gospels? We believe that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, had a message revealed to him, no doubt. And we know that Allah says that he didn't re reveal to a prophet except in the tongue of his people. Meaning when he had to deliver a message, he would do it in the language of his people. Otherwise imagine if we're sitting here and I was giving this talk in Russian. Maybe a couple of you, I think probably you, speak Russian. But the rest of you would be lost. So Allah, when he sends a prophet, he sends that prophet in the, to speak to the people in the language of the people. The people of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, they were Aramaic speaking people. They spoke the language of Aramaic, right? Close to the Hebrew language. But the earliest scriptures that we have for the New Testament are in Koine Greek. They are in Koine Greek. And we know most of the early followers of Jesus, many of them were illiterate fishermen, unlettered unsophisticated so no doubt that these were not written by them and the earliest manuscripts that you have of the New Testament are from the 4th century complete manuscripts somewhat complete Codex Sinaiticus and others that would be 4th century the majority of the manuscripts that we have are from around 7th century so you see that gap between the time of Jesus peace and blessings be upon him and the earliest scriptures here in Birmingham since I'm in Birmingham, you have the Birmingham Quran, which has parts of the Quran that have been carbon dated. And if you take the middle range of that carbon dating, it will put it to the end of the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the beginning of the Khilaf of Abu Bakr. So, what does that tell you? That these, and this is Surah Taha and part of Surah Kahf, and I've seen scans and papers of them where now I can recite. Knowing, because I know Surah Taha, I can recite it by looking at it, even if it doesn't have harakat, right there. As I recite from the Mus'haf today, it's from the Qur'an today. And that is an evidence on how the Qur'an has been preserved. If you look at the Sana'a manuscript, if you look at other manuscripts, these have all been carbon dated to those early times. In the original language, with the original message. So when you have that, and then on the other hand, you have books that were compiled by anonymous authors. For example, Matthew, Mark, John, Luke were not penned by those people. They are the gospel according to Matthew. In fact, the manuscripts and the, the book itself has no mention of the author. There is no mention in Luke or Mark or John or Matthew that the author is Mark or June. Or, and this were later on, these were given. And there are many books like the Gospel of Barnabas and others, the Gospel of Judas even, you know, that have been taken in and put in and taken out from the biblical compilation. That's why the Ethiopian Bible and the Orthodox Bible and the Catholic Bible and the King James Version of the Bible 
have different numbers of chapters. Then I'm not even talking about Book of Mormon and the Joe Witness New World Translation, all of that. You just take the Catholic and Christian, the New J, the King James Version, and the Catholic Bible, and Tobit, and these chapters are not are missing in the King James Version. So this tells you this was done later on. Later on, these books were put in and taken out and verses put in. And today, new translation like the NIV has taken out verses from the King James, saying that they're missing in the original manuscripts. These were fabrications. These were put in later. So when you have that, then you cannot say that the New Testament's verses are definitely going to be an evidence for us. We know that there is fabrication and additions and all that. And if you look at the Old Testament, same thing. The earliest scriptures of the Old Testament, the Dead Sea Scrolls that people are so, Dead Sea Scrolls, they get all excited. It's about 200 BC. <laughs> it's nowhere close to the time of Moses. Peace and blessings be upon all the prophets. So when we have that, you have to make the Quran the judge. Let me give you a simple example. If I give you three rulers, you call them rulers here too, like? Yeah, we measure things, I don't know. Uh, we call it erasers, you say rubbers. We have a whole different meaning for the word rubber in America, so be careful. Don't walk into a store and be like, can I get some rubbers? Yeah. So, I'm just, I'm just helping you out, bro. You know? <laughs> Inshallah, you come visit us in San Diego, I don't want you. <laughs> um, so a ruler, if I give you three rulers, one of them is perfectly accurate, measured, ISO standard, you know. Golden rule, no doubt, excellent. And the other two I tell you, you know what, there's some things right, but some of the numbers have flipped, some has faded. So you don't have to throw them away, but you want to always check with your gold standard to make sure. And I work in the medical device industry and sometimes we measure things. And when we have a ruler to measure, we have a gold standard that's kept, that we bring it out to make sure that the ruler that we're measuring with is correct. And if we find something in the regular ruler that is against the gold standard, then we have to say this one is wrong, we got to go by the standard. If it matches, then we accept it. Same thing is true. We know there is some of the truth in the Old Testament. There is some of the truth from the message of Jesus in the New Testament, some of it. And we know some of it's been changed. So we measure it against the Quran, against that which has been preserved perfectly. So now, even in the New Testament, for example, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. He prays. He prays to God. He prays to what's called the Father. You will not find throughout, at least I haven't, and I've read the Bible a few times, um, any time in the Bible where the Father prays to Jesus or the Holy Ghost prays to Jesus. But repeatedly you will find that Jesus prays to God and says he's the only true God and says that he knows things that nobody else knows. For example, when he talks about the hour, Jesus says that nobody knows the hour, not the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father. He didn't say only God, because then it could be like, oh no, all three are God. He said only the Father. So obviously they're not equal. And repeatedly in the Bible you will find that Jesus says that God sent me, the Father who sent me. So even with all the corruptions and additions and subtractions, we still see that message of Jesus praying to God and saying that he was sent from God and that he does not speak on his own authority. He does not speak except what God has ordained him to speak. So this is in line with what we find in the Quran. Mal Masih Ibn Maryam illa Rasul. What is or who is Masih? Jesus, the son of Mary, except that he's a messenger. He's nothing more than a messenger. That's what he is. And that's what Muslims believe. And if you look at many of the writings of biblical scholars, including Bart Ehrman and others, they will say that the original followers of Jesus, many of them did not take him to be divine. They did not take him to be God. And this is something that historically we see developed. And until the Council of Nicaea, it was hotly debated. I mean, even though the people in the, the Council itself, they all had their own ideas. But up until that time, there were Christian sects that would, had large numbers that did not believe Jesus was God or the Son of God. 
We believe those original followers, those were the ones that were on the haq, on the truth. And those that took a very pagan oriented belief of God having sons and Zeus and Hercules and Odin and what's the Odin one? What's the, the dude of the hammer? Thor, Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> I watch Marvel, right? right? Odin and Thor, and, and they took this pagan belief and, and smashed it into Christianity. That's when they deviated. I'll give you an example. How many of you here have heard of a thing called Christmas? Raise your hands. I don't act like you haven't heard of Christmas. Come on, man. Raise your hands. If you've heard of Christmas, raise your hands. And if you don't raise your hand, I'm going to call on you. You never heard of Christmas, bro? All right, then raise your hand, bro. You think you're going to get away with this? And in Christmas, oh, you can put your hands down. In Christmas, you have a man named Father Christmas. We call him Santa Claus, but you guys have him called Father Christmas here, right? Still, right? Father Christmas comes down your chimney. I don't know what you do if you don't have a chimney. Right? In America, we don't have chimneys, <laughs> or at least in California, right? And he leaves gifts. And then, you, do you guys leave cookies out, or is that an American thing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> we leave cookies out, sugar related poisonous cookies, right? Sugar is bad for you. And milk, I think, right? And he has reindeer. Anybody heard Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? I went to school here when I was a little kid. They made us sing this stuff in school. Plymouth Grove in, in Manchester. So he has Rudolph, Red-Nosed Reindeer. And he has little elves, which are like slave labor. <laughs> they don't get paid. They just make toys all year long. And there's Mrs. Santa Claus. And he wears red and calls people hoes. Again, if you go to America, be careful with that one too. It's not what you water your yard with. Um, where did that come from? I mean, churches here celebrate Christmas, do they not? Ours do, right? I would love for somebody to show me where in the Bible is Christmas mentioned. 25th of December. I haven't seen it. I would love if somebody can show me reindeer, Father Christmas gifts, elves, Christmas trees. The only thing I did find in the, in the Bible was a condemnation, where they were condemned putting gold and things like this on trees, where they forbid it. I did find that. But I never found anything about putting stars and balls and little glass things and things on trees. And uh, you know, I don't know if they got a lot of reindeers in Palestine. I've been to Palestine. Quds. I didn't see any reindeer. Snow and eggnog. Ugh. We got eggnog from, right? These were pagan festivals, Saturnalia, where they had these pagan ideas. And they, they got put into Christianity so much that today you can hardly find a church that doesn't celebrate Christmas. And nobody thinks about that. When I used to go to church, when I was younger, when I was away from the Muslim Ummah and things like this, Every church I went to, Santa Claus and gifts and ho, ho, ho and reindeer and all of this. And when I used to be in Bible studies, I used to ask sometimes. You know, I don't see any of this bunnies, uh, Easter with a bunny and the little eggs you hide and things. Right? So just like the belief was corrupted to suit a pagan belief set, these practices were changed to suit pagan practices from Europe so that Christianity could spread by incorporating pagan beliefs. But we call upon Christians, true Christians who really want to follow Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, to reject these pagan ideas, the idea of God having a son, the idea of Santa Claus and Christmas. and You know, it's interesting, till like the 50s and 60s, Santa Claus wasn't red. He didn't wear red. The earlier depictions have him in green. And there was a poet or writer who kind of drew him and read. And then the ones that really made it popular was Coca-Cola. I kid you not, look it up. Coca-Cola used it as a marketing strategy. And that's what made the red coat wearing Santa Claus popular. Why would you want to take your religion from Coke? <laughs> take your religion from divine scripture. So we call Christians and others who are truth seekers to go back to the original religion of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, the religion of Islam. 
the religion of Moses, the religion of Abraham, the religion of David, the religion of Noah, the religion of Adam. Alayhim salam Peace and blessings be upon all of them. And that is why we believe that Jesus was a true Muslim and a follower of the religion of Islam. And we as Muslims believe he will return. And when he returns, he will return as a Muslim. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and everybody else 